Shark fishing in Indonesia is a tricky and complex topic. Located in the heart of the Coral Triangle, Indonesia is home to a huge variety of sharks and many of them are endemic, i.e. species that can only be found in Indonesia. However, Indonesia is also the world's largest shark fishing nation they catch more sharks per year than any other country in the world, there are some exceptions, but it's important to note that shark fishing for domestic use is almost entirely legal in Indonesia. Many families rely on shark fishing as a key source of income and also a vital food source, sharks are one of the world's most endangered species groups and protecting them is key for the health of ocean ecosystems. However, conservation efforts are a fine balancing act. Whilst trying to protect sharks we also need to understand and protect vulnerable coastal communities that rely on sharks for meeting their basic needs, you may have heard that sharks are worth more alive than dead, and this is often true, people pay for the privilege of seeing sharks in their natural environment. So it's often thought that ecotourism could provide an alternative livelihood to small-scale fishers who catch sharks. In some scenarios, this can work well, but it's certainly not a case of one size fits all the, in Indonesia, the economic value of shark tourism is at least $22 million annually. The country is a global biodiversity hotspot and a top destination for scuba divers and shark lovers from around the world. However, it's also the largest shark fishing nation on the planet. People depend on the ocean in Indonesia and shark catches are of huge value, for food and financially. Shark conservation can have drastic consequences on these communities and ecotourism often isn't a viable direct alternative. Holly Booth, a Save Our Seas Foundation project leader and recent PhD graduate, recognized this. She first became fascinated by small-scale fisheries and sharks while doing her master's, when she carried out a research project looking into the manta ray trade. Holly found herself intrigued by the human aspect of the issue and has since been based in Indonesia, working at the interface between conservation and human welfare. Shark fisheries in Indonesia are incredibly complex, with tricky trade-offs between conservation objectives and coastal livelihoods, so this feels like a problem worth understanding and solving, so, if ecotourism isn't a direct alternative to catching sharks, what is? One potential solution is to pay small-scale fishers for pro-conservation behavior, like releasing sharks, to compensate them for lost income. And here's where tourism could come in, perhaps international tourists who come to see these animals could pay to support such community-based conservation. But would they be willing to, and how much money could be raised, shark fisheries in Indonesia are incredibly complex, with tricky trade-offs between conservation objectives and coastal livelihoods, so this feels like a problem worth understanding and solving, so, if ecotourism isn't a direct alternative to catching sharks, what is? One potential solution is to pay small-scale fishers for pro-conservation behavior, like releasing sharks, to compensate them for lost income. And here's where tourism could come in, Perhaps international tourists who come to see these animals could pay to support such community-based conservation. But would they be willing to, and how much money could be raised? In Pulau Wa, tourist payments could bring in between $300,000 and $1.3 million each year. And in Lombok Island, which attracts larger numbers of tourists, between $2.3 million and $10 million could be generated. This is a lot but is it enough to cover the costs of community-based conservation? In short, yes. Based on other research conducted under Holly's SOSF grant, calculations showed that preventing landings and promoting the release of hammerhead sharks and wedgefish in the two nearby small-scale fisheries would cost. In total, a maximum of $236,000 per year. Tourist payments could raise at least 10 times this, so far the results have been promising. A hammerhead shark, two guitarfish and 21 wedgefish.